Hey everyone, it's Music Master, here to talk about Ashes of Creation and why you should be excited about its upcoming release. Let's get into it. What is Ashes of Creation? Ashes of Creation is an exciting new upcoming MMORPG where players arrive in the world of Vera to explore, rebuild, and repopulate their ancestral home thousands of years after it was destroyed in an ancient apocalypse. After a successful Kickstarter campaign back in 2017, Intrepid Studios has finally announced that their Alpha 2 testing phase will begin in 2024, seven years into development. I know what you're thinking. Alpha 2? Seven years music? Isn't that a long time to be released? And my answer is, well, not really. While some may try to convince you that Ashes of Creation will never release due to its longer development timeline, the truth is, many of the most popular MMORPGs over the past two decades have had development times in the range of six to nine years. It isn't surprising to me that Ashes of Creation would be towards the upper end of this spectrum, given the ambitious scope of the game and the fact that it plans to break boundaries in the genre. In addition, considering the fact that Intrepid completely overhauled the combat system and updated from Unreal Engine 4 to Unreal Engine 5 between Alpha 1 and Alpha 2, and the extenuating circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic, I would say that Ashes of Creation is well on track to release in a reasonable amount of time. While we don't have an official date for release, I'd estimate that Ashes will fully release sometime in 2026 or 2027. So, music. What's the deal? Why are we getting excited and pumped up about a game that's most likely three to four years away from release? Well, the answer is Alpha 2. Alpha 2 will be persistent, meaning the servers will be kept up all day and night until launch. Core systems are expected to be in place at the start of Alpha 2, and by the end of Alpha 2, the game is expected to be feature complete. There is also no NDA, which means Alpha 2 testers can stream and share the game with the broader community. I, for one, will certainly be streaming this game nonstop for my community, so if you want to stay up to date, be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for all the latest updates. What are the features of the game though, you ask? Well, let's dive in. Players start their journey by choosing one of nine playable races, two variations of human, the Kalar and the Veiloon, two variations of dwarves, the Dunir and the Nakua, two variations of orcs, the Renkai and Vek, two variations of elves, the Empyrean and the Pyre, and a hybrid race called the Tolmar. Once selected, a character's race will be permanent and will have key impacts on a player's experience throughout the game, including access to special racial mounts, quests, and unique contribution to node appearance. Ashes of Creation will feature an in-depth character creator that will allow detailed customization of every aspect of the body, which can be adjusted with a wide range of presets and sliders. You'll be able to change your appearance and game via the character creator by visiting salons and barbershops, and there will be unique and special features that can be unlocked in the character creator by questing and completing achievements. For instance, you may unlock a special scar that can be applied because you participated in a particular siege, or a tattoo because you completed a quest related to your cultural background. Unique blending and sculpting features will also be available where you can combine two or more presets from the character creator on a spectrum or modify the shape of a feature via draggable dots that allow you to achieve all sorts of asymmetrical features. There will be eight primary archetypes a player can select upon creation of their character. Bard, Cleric, Fighter, Mage, Ranger, Rogue, Summoner, and Tank. This primary archetype can't be changed, and as a player progresses through the game, they will unlock a variety of passive and activatable skills based on their primary archetype choice. Eventually, players will gain the ability to choose a secondary archetype from the same list of choices. This secondary archetype can be changed in-game, and will modify the primary archetype via Ashes of Creation's unique augment system, where a character's primary archetype skills are changed slightly based on the features of their secondary archetype. So, for example, a fighter primary archetype may have a skill that charges forward and knocks down a foe, but when mixed with the mage secondary archetype, that same skill may now teleport the fighter to the enemy instead of rushing across the battlefield. This unique combination of primary and secondary archetype will decide the character's class, giving an insane total of 64 possible combinations of classes that a player can play in-game. The level cap at launch is planned to be 50. On release, the developers anticipate that the maximum level should be attainable in approximately 45 days of playing 4-6 to six hours a day. In other words, a minimum of 180 gameplay hours to reach max level. 
According to Stephen Sharif, the idea is not to be a game where somebody can just know life for a week and be max level. The idea is that investment needs to be significant and the reward is then respective of that investment. To ensure this and the respect of the casual player, there will be a variety of different leveling paths, both horizontal and vertical, and not everything will be driven by your ca class level, with lower level players being able to make significant impacts in the world as well. Alpha 1 had character progression to level 15, and with Alpha 2, that is planned to increase to level 35, though this is still subject to change. The world of Vera is expected to be 1,200 square kilometers at launch, with 480 kilometers of explorable land and 750 kilometers of explorable ocean. To put this in perspective, World of Warcraft's map, with all expansions, is estimated to be approximately 500 square kilometers. The world of Vera is so massive that developers have stated it will take 75 minutes to traverse from the northernmost point of a continent to the southernmost point of a continent on foot. The entire map will be hidden by Fog of War when a player first starts the game, gradually unlocking as characters explore and learn of key locations throughout the world. Probably one of Ash's most unique and exciting features, though, is its node system. Scattered strategically across the world will be 85 preset points of development called nodes, each with its own circle of influence. These nodes will start hidden to players at first, existing behind the scenes as collection points for activities. As players adventure in a node circle of influence, they contribute experience to that node, which allows it to level up and progress its development. There will be six stages for a node above basic wilderness, where they can develop into camps, then villages, all the way up to sprawling metropolises. Larger nodes will have larger zones of influence and can enslave nearby nodes, converting them into vassal nodes, which create complex networks of influence. Not every node will be able to reach Metropolis level, as one node's development can cap or impede on a neighboring node's development, and content will be locked or unlocked behind which nodes develop. According to the developers, a maximum of five metropolises will be able to exist at any given time in the world. This unique system creates conflict between different communities that have vested interest in the development of certain nodes, and gives players agency in deciding how the political and geographical climate shapes up for a server, ensuring that no two servers look or feel the same. With the node system, Ashes of Creation will truly be a game shaped by the player's actions and decisions. Ooh, that is a lot. We're already eight minutes into this video, and I haven't even gotten to the meat and potatoes of this game. In an effort to keep this video under 10 minutes, I'm going to do a brief recap of some of the player activities available in this game, and then I'll cover them in more detail in later videos. So if you want to stay up to date with the latest information, make sure to like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's keep going. Ashes of Creation is a true PvX game, with a plethora of both PvP and PvE activities. The world itself outside of nodes will have open PvP flagging, which means players can engage with other players in combat at any time for any reason while adventuring. The game itself will manage this with a corruption system, where players are rewarded or penalized for engaging with various types of individuals. For instance, if you engage with a non-hostile player who doesn't fight back, you can become corrupted, which can cause you to drop loot upon death or have player bounties put on your head. Corruption stacks, which means the more you do it, the tougher the game becomes for you. The game will have an array of quests, dungeons, raids, open world bosses, global events, a caravan system for transporting goods from one city to another, and an entire naval system where you can build your own ships to explore the open seas for buried treasure, defeat sea monsters, and engage in player versus player ship combat. Content will be tailored for group sizes of 8, 16, and 40 people, and players will be able to join guilds in game. Guilds will have a maximum member capacity of 300 people, with access to their own chat and a variety of special guild skills that can be unlocked for members as the guild levels up. Guild alliances will also exist in the game, where a guild can be a member of a single alliance with three other guilds and unlock various perks, like a shareable alliance bank, special alliance quests, and trade agreements. If you're looking for a guild, I can't help but plug my own since our guild is recruiting, so check out the uh, link in the description for more info if you're interested. 
Players can and are expected to attain citizenship at nodes with various types of player housing available, including inns, apartments, instance housing, and larger freeholds outside of the main node hub. Being a citizen of a node allows a player to be actively involved in its development, and to even become mayor. A node system for selecting a mayor will be decided based on the node's type, and a mayor will have the power to allocate node funds to upgrading a variety of buildings, investing in node defenses, and expanding economy. Nodes can be destroyed during node sieges, declarable by any player who completes a series of prerequisite quests and attains a siege scroll. A substantial amount of preparation and investment will go into declaring a node siege, and these mass PvX battles will last approximately two hours, with attackers attempting to take control of various node districts over the course of the siege. If a node survives a siege, it will have a large cooldown period before it can be sieged again, making declaring a node siege an important and well-thought-out decision for the attackers. Castles will also exist in Ashes of Creation, and guilds can participate in large sieges to capture and occupy one of the five guild castles in-game. These castle sieges will pit 250 players against 250 players on a single battlefield, though it is hoped that this can increase to 500 versus 500 over time. Attackers will look to breach the castle walls and channel a throne control point to win, while defenders will deploy traps and blockades as well as hire mercenary NPCs to defend specific locations. Like node sieges, castles will have a cooldown on how often they can be attacked, making this yet again another important decision for guilds to consider. Ashes of Creation will have an in-depth and player-driven economy, with public auction houses relegated to each node, an escrow system to prevent griefing in the crafting system, and a business owner system where players can own and operate their own custom shops, stalls, and freeholds. The game will feature three artisan classes in which players can specialize, each containing various professions that a character can master. Characters can only attain master level in one of the three parent artisan classes and up to two professions within it, forcing players to specialize and focus their efforts and ensure ensuring that all artists and classes and professions have ample demand in-game. All right, I think that's all we have for today. I had to cut out a couple details to keep the video under time, but I hope that after watching, you're as excited as I am for Ashes of Creation. Again, I'd appreciate if you gave the like and subscribe so you can stay up to date in future videos, but otherwise, for now, Music Master out.